Hey friends, this is Dr. Trudy, the host of The Christian View. I'm excited to be with you today and thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you are not following The Christian View on our YouTube channel, I would encourage you to do that. We have a lot of great interviews coming up that you're not going to want to miss. And then I would love for you to subscribe to our newsletter. We have so many things happening um, between now and the end of the year and then some exciting things happening at the first of next year that I know you're going to want to hear about. And so go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter and to our YouTube channel. It's thechristianview.tv. And then you can also follow me on social media, um, Dr. Trudy. And I would love to hear from you. So you can write me as well at um, drtrudysimmons at gmail.com. Or if you go to our Christian View website, you can always send in um, emails through the website as well. And I will always get them. And each prayer request I get, I pray over um, diligently. So make sure that you are following us on social media. Um, so anyway, I want to talk to you today about Mary and Martha. And you've heard that story, I'm sure, a million times. But as I was asking the Lord um, what he wanted me to share and and talk about today um, in my own quiet time. He kept bringing back Mary and Martha and how so often in life we get so busy. And if you've been tuning in at all, you know that I just finished a big goal in my life. I just completed the world championship Ironman in Kona. And so, you know, with, with every um, completion of a dream or, or of a goal, you're always wanting to have another goal in mind. And, and that just keeps us from kind of just settling and having that um, ho-hum kind of life. We always want to have something else that we want to achieve, you know, something else, some way to better ourselves. You know, we want to be able to be excited about getting up in the morning, right? And, and that happens by having those goals and those desires. Um, and those are God-given goals and desires, right? But we want to make sure that we are fostering them, you know, that we are, um, we're watering them and we're feeding those dreams. And, but we also want to make sure that those dreams and those goals are never that they never become an idol and that we always have God first in our life. And so when we wake up in the morning, we want to be excited about our day, but we also want to give our day to the Lord. And so as I was praying about, you know, what my next, um, what my next um, goal was going to be, you know, whether it was going to, whether I was going to focus on a spiritual goal um, a physical goal, a mental goal, a relational goal. Um, and I think I'm going to focus on all those, but the Lord just really prompted my heart. He said, listen, Trudy, you're praying and you're trying to figure it out. He's like, think about Mary and Martha and what did the Lord say to Mary and Martha? And so I'm going to read that to you. And I really want you to follow along. And as you're following along, just ask the Lord, are you striving, trying to do everything to feel important and to feel successful? Because in Christ, you're already enough, right? He's going to give us those dreams and those goals. Because as I tell people in the counseling room a lot, there's no retirement this side of heaven. God has something for each of us to do. And we are all going to influence people in the area that he has placed us in. And so we can never stop growing. We can never stop dreaming. We can never stop having those goals and those visions for our life that God has given us. But we have to make sure that we are putting first things first. And if you're a lady, if you're a woman out there, you know that it's hard because sometimes we're like, oh, we're so good at multitasking. I can multitask all day long. Sometimes God wants your undivided attention. And that's what he told me recently. You know, I can plan. I can do all the things. You know, I, I jokingly told my husband I wanted to try out to be a Navy SEAL, right? Because it's the most vigorous training mentally. you got to mentally be strong. You've got to physically be strong. You've got to be you've got to be so strong, body, mind, and spirit, you know, and he gently said, um, no, Trudy, you need to find a, a different goal. But um but that's, you know, we've, we've got to get our minds, our thoughts in line with what God is saying for each season of our life. And so I want to read um, out of Luke chapter 10. And then I just want to ask you a couple of questions and see where you are in your season of life. Are you at the beginning of a goal? Are you at the middle of a goal? Are you at the end of a goal? and wondering what your next step is? Because God is in each one of those goals. He's in each 
He's in the whole process from beginning to end. And as I said last week, if you didn't hear it, he's got your finish line under control. Nothing that pops up to, to, um, to delay or to, um, to distract doesn't catch him by surprise. But we have to make sure that we are doing our part because God will always do his part, but he will never do our part. We've got to do our part ourselves. So let's read this. Um, it says, it's uh, Luke chapter 10, and I'm going to start in verse 38. It says, now while they were on their way, it occurred to Jesus, it occurred that it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. And then it goes on to say, but Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to tell her to get up and help and to lend me a hand. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. There is need of only one, but few things. Mary has chosen the good portion. Mary has chosen the good portion, which, which shall not be taken away from her. So I want to ask you, are you the Martha? Are you the Martha who is, who is busy, busy doing all these things, striving and striving? And, and the Holy Spirit is saying, wait a minute, Mary has found something that will never be taken from her never be taken from her. You know, we all have good intentions, right? To get up in the morning, to read our Bible, to pray. But then sometimes life just takes over. But the Lord is saying to you today, he's gently saying, I want you to stop striving. I want you to stop being so busy so that you can spend time with me. You can spend time worshiping me, spend time in my presence. You know, so often I hear people say, I just want a word. I just want a word from the Lord to know what to do. You know what? He's given us the written word. He's given us, given us his love language to us. And that is the Bible, the word of God. And as daughters of the king or sons of the king, we should be reading this word daily. It should be the bread that we take in every day. It's the living water. But so often, and I fall into this trap too, we're so busy striving, trying to get to that next level, trying to, you know, even if it's just getting the laundry done, and some days, y'all, it seems like the laundry is never going to end. Can I get an amen? Sometimes that laundry pile is so high. But the Lord is saying, Mary found something that will never be taken from her. Maybe you're trying to please people. Maybe you're trying to, to look good enough so people will like you and invite you. Or maybe, I'm not sure what it is that you're striving to obtain right now. But the Lord is saying, what Mary found sitting at the feet of Jesus can never, ever be taken from her. And that is what the Lord wants for you today. He wants your first he wants your best so that you can have something that will never be taken from you. And that is that relationship with Jesus Christ. That is spending that time with him on a daily basis, letting him fill you up. Because y'all, as a mom, as a busy mom, you can't give out of an empty cup. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you up. And it is great. I was talking to someone the other day. You know, we live in Atlanta and there are a million conferences you can go to in Atlanta. There's, a, you know, tons of churches that you can go to, Bible studies, but nothing takes the place of your time with Father God. Nothing takes the place of just sitting still before the Lord with your Bible and, and praise music on and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you through his word. And he wants to do that for you. So I don't know what season of life you're in. You know, I'm in a really, um, even though I just finished one big goal of my life and just gained a whole bunch of extra time. Um, I've spent two days at the hospital with my dad. Um, and then one thing after another. So that free time doesn't come often. I have two children. Like I said, the laundry, I run a ministry, but I've got to make sure 
that I put God first. And that means if I have to get up earlier in the morning, I heard someone say, don't ever hit that snooze button. Because if you hit the snooze button, you're already behind. So even set, set that alarm a little earlier. Be excited about getting up in the morning and spending time with God and ask the Lord to direct your steps. But then also think about, are you just too busy? And most people are today. It's, it seems to be a badge of honor to say, I'm so busy, you know, but I want to challenge that. Is that a tool of the enemy to keep you so busy and so striving for the next, for the next that you miss the moment? You don't want to miss the moment because in the moment, the Holy Spirit shows up in the moment, the Holy Spirit can transform in an instant that hurt, that addiction, that, that cry of your heart. But you've got to take time to sit at his feet and to know the season that you're in. Mary found that and she seized the opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus. She knew that work would always be there, but that Jesus was getting ready to leave. And, you know, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we know that, that Jesus is always with us because the word says he will never leave us. He's always with us. And he's saying, I'm here. Just like a little child. Listen to this. You know, you're, you have your cell phone and, and you're busy doing this and you're doing this. And your, your child is, is waiting patiently for you to share something with you. Jesus is waiting to share what he has for you, your next season, your next step. He's wanting to share how you can be set free so you can help other people be set free. But you've got to take the time to sit with him as Mary did. You have to spend regular quality time with God. And, you know, one person told me one time that I couldn't have quality time with God while I was out on a run. And some of my best times we're having that praise music on while I was running and praising Jesus and praying. So whatever that looks like to you, however the Holy Spirit speaks to you is, is how you need to spend your quality time with him. I remember, um, oh, I can't remember his name at the moment, but his mom had 19 children and she had to pull her apron over her head to spend time with Jesus. And her 19 children knew that it was John Wesley. If, uh, if she had her apron over her head, that she was spending time with Jesus. So I want to encourage you today to learn how to spend time with Jesus. Put aside the striving. Find out which season are you in. Are you at the beginning of a goal? Are you at the middle? Are you at the end? Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through each of those seasons because each season is important and each season we need to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit. What is he saying? What is he speaking to you now during this season of your life? For me, he's telling me to sit still for a little while. The other day we had a taping, a taping the Christian view and I tried and tried to study, but he said, I want you just to worship me, Trudy, just to worship me. And that's all I did. I put on praise music the whole week before, the whole day before, the whole morning before taping. And all I did was praise him because that was where he wanted me. And I have to tell you that that taping day was the best taping day that we've had in a long time because I invited the Holy Spirit in. I listened to him. I obeyed him. I sat at his feet asking him what was next. We may never know the big picture, right? But he will show us step by step, moment by moment, what we need to do. So let's, let's not be so much like Martha today. Let's sit back. Let's lean in a little bit more. Let's sit at the feet of Jesus and say, what is it that you would have me to do during this season of my life? Because God is speaking. My question to you is, are you listening? I hope so. He has great things for you. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Trudy with One on One in the Christian View. I have a lot of great things coming up and I can't wait to share them with you. So make sure you subscribe to the Christian View YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. There's a lot of great things. Know that God loves you. He sees you. He hears you. He has not forgotten you. And he is a right on time God. Take care. Be blessed. Bye-bye.